Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to get started on making a chess set. Now originally I was just planning to make a chess board for some chess pieces that were given to me, but that didn't really work out as planned and I'll talk about that later in the project. In terms of materials for the chess board, I had four offcuts of mahogany, these are the feet from some salvaged hat and coat stands, and I had a piece of what I believe to be Iroko, although I could be wrong. I've had this for a while and I don't remember where I picked this up. First I needed to prepare the two materials. I started by flattening one edge and one face of the piece of Iroko on the planer, and then I did the same for the mahogany. Then I ripped the opposite faces of the pieces of mahogany at the table saw to make them square, and I ripped the Iroko down the middle to give me two pieces. Then I thickness planed the other faces of the Iroko until they were the same size as the pieces of mahogany. I then chopped the Iroko to length to be similar sized pieces as the mahogany using the mitre saw. I also cleaned up the edges of the mahogany pieces at the mitre saw too. With all of the pieces prepared I alternated the two woods ready for gluing up. I used a couple of bark lamps for the glue up. And used a framing square to check the shorter pieces of Iroko were level and then I could tighten the clamps and wipe away the excess glue with a damp cloth. I then added some F clamps to make sure that the pieces were seated flat onto the bark lamps. Once the glue had dried I cleaned up the ends at the table saw using my panel sled. And then I cleaned up the faces of the workpiece with my hand plane. Next I needed to cut the block into strips. The table saw would have been the best tool for this, but I used the band saw because the blade has a thinner kerf and I wanted to get as much material out of this block as I possibly could. A little bit of blade drift on the band saw is inevitable, especially when using a pretty dull blade like I am here. So before cutting the next strip I made sure to flatten the end of the block with the hand plane. I checked for flatness with a steel ruler, and then I could cut the next strip and so on. The bandsaw left a bit of tear out, so I cleaned up each strip on the belt sander. With all of the strips cut I could then make sure that they would all mate together properly by flattening the edges with a couple of strokes on the hand plane. Next I could glue the strips together to create the chessboard. I used a ruler to make sure that the pieces that formed the board were straight. Then I added cling film and added a couple of small boards and F clamps again to make sure that the board would be as flat as possible while the glue set. The cling film was used just to stop the chess board sticking to the scraps of wood. Once the glue had dried I used a cabinet scraper to get rid of most of the excess glue. And then I made sure that the edges of the board were straight with my block plane.
I wanted to make a mitered trim for the board and I had an offcut of oak which I'd use for that. I cut the mitres at the mitre saw and glued and taped them to the sides of the board. I used another mitered piece just to check that each corner would marry up well together. Once all four pieces of the trim were held in place with tape, I then added some elastic bands and this would help to apply pressure and get the joints nice and tight. Once the glue had dried, I then used my belt sander to flatten the board, clean off any dried up glue on the surface and also to get the trim flush with the board. I sanded both sides at 120 grit and then moved on to sanding with my random orbit sander with 120 grit also. Next I want to add a backing to the chessboard and I've looked through my sheet materials here in the workshop. Unfortunately I don't have anything thin. I do have some MDF but it seems a shame to use an MDF on this project. I really want to use a ply. So I went and bought some of this 5mm beach veneered plywood from Wix here in the UK for $11.99. Dylan. I marked up the size of the board onto the ply and cut it out with a jigsaw, making sure to keep on the outside of the pencil lines. And here's one reason why I hate buying wood in shops. These stupid labels that never peel off. I applied glue to the face of the ply, spread it out and then used a couple of scrap boards to make kind of a sandwich, which would help to distribute the clamping pressure across the whole board. I used F clamps and a couple of long reach C clamps to reach near the centre. With the glue dry I then used the hand plane to get the ply flush with the oak trim. Then I added another mitered trim out of some offcuts of mahogany and this would hide the edges of the plywood. I made this trim in the same way as I had made the oak trim so I didn't bother filming this in detail. I brought the trim flush to the board with my block plane and then I added a decorative edge to the mahogany trim using my router. To clean up the routed edges, I wrapped some sandpaper around a pencil and used that. I then sanded the board by hand at 240, 400, 600 and finally 1200 grit to get it nice and smooth. I sprayed off the dust with my air compressor and the first coat of finish that I applied was teak oil. Because this is an end grain board, the oil soaked in extremely quickly, so I recoated it once or twice straight away and then left it alone to soak in. After the oil finish, I decided to add a spray varnish for a couple of reasons. Firstly, as there'll be chess pieces moving around the board, I wanted quite a hard wearing top coat of finish. And secondly, I wanted a nice glossy sheen to the board, which I knew spray varnish would give me. In between each coat of spray varnish, I sanded with 400 grit wet and dry paper to keep the surface nice and smooth before applying the next coat. It got three coats of the spray varnish in total. 